All right, folks, I guess we can get started. It's nearly the top of the hour now. Uh, so thanks you all for coming. Just gonna start my timer here so I know where I'm up to. Um, yeah, so a little bit about me. I'm Adam Williamson. Uh, I'm a senior principal software quality engineer, which means I test stuff. They keep making the job titles more and more fancy. Um, I've been at Red Hat since 2009, so it's been quite a long time, uh, always working on QA, so I've kind of seen the, the evolution that I'm going to talk about in this talk from very basic manual testing all the way up to what we do right now, which we're going to going to talk about. Um, I just want to do a thing I normally do, which is kind of like an audience census, because I like to know who I'm talking to and what you're here for. So, uh, who runs Linux on the desktop? Doesn't have to be Fedora, just people who run Linux. Okay, most of you, that's good. I like that. Uh, <laughs> who knows how to make a Linux distribution? Who's worked on one, knows how that works? Okay, pretty good advanced class. That's good, because it means I don't have to spend 15 minutes explaining. Great. Uh, yeah, and for questions, if anyone has questions during the talk, you know, if you have a quick question, go ahead and put a hand up and I can take it in flight. If you're gonna keep talking for 30 seconds and I have to answer for five minutes, maybe hold it to the end and we'll hope we have enough time. Uh, great, so let's get going. Do, 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 do. So yeah, I will just cover this briefly for the folks who don't know about it, and it's kind of a preamble to the talk. Um, so a lot of how we test an operating system involves how we make an operating system. So how do we make Fedora? Um, very, very simplified. This is leaving out a lot of stuff. Uh, we build packages, which are, you know, all the bits of a bit of software that you might need to have on your system. And this is done by a system called Koji. Um, and then we bundle packages into things called updates, uh, which may contain one or may contain more than one package. And we run them through a system called Bodhi, which um, combines those updates and provides a web UI where, you know, feedback can happen. And then we bundle the packages that have been through Koji and Bodhi into things called composes, which is, you know, a, we do these daily, more or less, which are everything, like the repositories with all of the packages in them and the images you can download and install on your own system. So when you go and grab a Fedora image, it has been produced as part of a compose. And the system that handles composes is called Punji. Um, there's a little difference, which we'll come up against later, between development and stable um, here. So we have Rawhide, which is our development branch of Fedora and Things happen a little differently there, but I'll take that as we go along. Something I'm going to kind of skip over a little bit during the talk, but to be fair, I'll mention is that there's a lot of inputs to a Fedora, you know, building an entire Fedora Compose that aren't packages. Um, there's things like the configuration of the Compose system itself. There's things like the lists that make up what packages are in what group. And I'll mention this again later, but that's kind of an area which we don't test so much right now, and that's like an area I'm looking at improving on for the future. So we'll come up against that again later. So that's how we build an operating system. How do we test it? Um, basically, all those levels that I mentioned briefly about how we build an operating system, testing can and does happen at all of them. Um, so the packaging in Fedora these days, I believe in most distributions, uh, packages are in are under source control. They're in a Git repository. So your spec, the spec file, which is like the recipe for building the package and all the sources, lives in a Git repository. And this Git repository is behind like a forge interface. You know, something like GitHub or GitLab. The one we use is called Pagger, but that doesn't really matter. The point is that provides an integration point where the testing can happen and feedback can reach the packager at that point, at the point where they put the package into source control. There can be testing, um, so you, you, know, you can have a pull request for a package and testing can happen at that point. We can have testing at the level of the build, not testing at the level of the individual change to the package repository, but when you do an official build, through Koji, you know, signals fly and there can be testing at that point. We can do testing at the level of the update. So when you create an update, which is, you know, a bundle of updates and an intent that this set of packages 
should go here at this time. Testing can happen at that point. And finally, we can do testing at the level of the compose. So when a compose is the whole thing is spit out, then we can take that entire thing and run tests on the compose itself. So uh, this is kind of going from small to large, I guess you can see, right? There's, it makes sense to do different tests at different levels. And if anyone's familiar with the concepts of you know different types of testing, you know unit testing, integration testing, end-to-end -end testing, we're probably going to be doing you know unit style testing at the level of diskit. And then all the way down on compose testing, what we're doing there is really like functional testing. And I'll go into the details of that later, but that's, you know, that's part of the, the theory here. So the what as I said, I'm the team lead for Fedora QA. So it's part of my job to kind of figure what testing should we do? When? Like what should we do with the results? How much testing should we do? Um, and this is like a constant challenge because the fundamental challenge for anyone doing this, like not just us at Fedora, but any other Linux distribution, even any other operating system, is operating systems are huge. You know, it's a gigantic thing that you can do thousands and thousands of different things on, and you can install it on thousands and thousands of different configurations. And I have a team of about eight people, and we release Fedora every six months. So this is, it's a difficult circle to square. You're never going to be able to test everything. Um, so as we're going through the talk, this is like a constant challenge in the back of my mind is like focusing our resources on providing, you know, the most testing, the most useful testing we can within the, the constraints we're operating in. And of course, this makes automation incredibly important for us because, as I said, back when I came on board around 2009, we didn't do any automated testing. All the testing we did was manual. And that obviously means you're covering a tiny, tiny, tiny sliver of what you can do. So the more we can automate, it's, it's a huge force multiplier for us, which will become clear as we go along. So we're always looking to automate things because it's, it's hugely important to us. So automated test systems, we have those now. Um, I'll try not to get too deep into the background, but so maybe the first three or four years I was working on Fedora, it was 100% manual testing. And it, it was kind of hell. Like my life was waking up and running a VM eight times in a row and doing a very slightly different install test on it and then going to bed and doing the same thing the next day. <laughs> so this, you know, it, it, we could feel that it wasn't efficient and it wasn't any fun for us. So we've always had this strong motivation to, to automate things. Um, and a long time ago, we had this project called AutoQA, which was supposed to, you know, solve this problem, and that never quite got there in the end. Um, but instead, we developed these two systems, which I'm going to introduce you to as we go along. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about is OpenQA. Um, I should say off the top, OpenQA is not developed by Red Hat or by Fedora. Um, OpenQA was originally developed by SUSE. I don't know if we have any SUSE folks here, um, but they're around at the conference. They're great. You should go talk to them. So the way this happened is while Fedora was still kind of officially working on AutoQA, one of the SUSE folks, um, as part of a SUSE hack week, <laughs> spun up OpenQA and had it testing Fedora, <laughs> just as a kind of a proof of concept that, hey, this test system we have can test other things. So one of the folks from my team saw this and said, hey, this is actually, we could use this. Why don't we use this? So we took it and we ran with it, and now it's one of our key test systems. So OpenQA, um, back on that chart from a couple of slides ago, doot, 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 doot. Yeah, OpenQA focuses on update testing and compose testing. It's kind of down the bottom of the chart. It's very much about functional testing. Um, OpenQA, the way we use it, it's developed more capabilities now, but its original core and the way we still mainly use it in Fedora, it's kind of like an extremely stupid intern um, that's sitting in front of a real computer. Because to use OpenQA, you spin up a virtual machine. Um, and you tell OpenQA to type things, look at the screen, and click on things. Technically, what it's doing in the background is it's inputting over VNC and the serial console. Uh, but really, the way it looks is you tell it, OK, look for a certain thing on the screen and click on it, or type something into a console and expect a certain result. So this is really good for testing a distribution, because this is the kind of thing we have to do a lot of. Um, so 
if you think about automated testing, depending on how familiar you are with it, um, if you look at it from the perspective of a small software project, you're often going to be running you know, through a very code-linked um, test framework, something like PyTest, which is it, it doesn't work like this at all. And those kind, that kind of testing framework isn't great if what you want to do is test that your operating system boots or test that your operating system shows a desktop and your installer works. This is the perfect system for that. So that's what we use OpenQA for. Um, the weakness of OpenQA is that it isn't um, a traditional kind of automated test framework. You can make it be one, um, and we occasionally do that, but it's kind of ugly and it's very inefficient because it's always spinning up virtual machines. Um, and it, it's it's very slow if you just if really all you want to do is run a program and see what the output from it is you wouldn't use OpenQA for that. What is on my next slide here? Yeah, so what do we actually do with OpenQA? Um, so we have this thing in Fedora called the Release Validation Test Suite, which is the big list of tests that we look at to decide whether Fedora is ready to release. So we've got one of these composers I mentioned before. We're thinking about making it the final Fedora 38 release or whatever. And we say, well, is it good enough? And the way we do that is we have this list of you know, a couple hundred tests um, that are required to pass. And as in the old days, we had to run all of those tests manually. For every single compose, we would run those tests and you know, put the results in a wiki page. OpenQA now does about 75% of those tests. So it does things like run and install on ButterFS, run and install on ext4, run and install where you take an existing file system and make it smaller so you can put Fedora next to it, run a dual boot install with another, you know, another instance of Fedora. It tests things like um, various GNOME desktop applications, are they working? It tests whether you can log out from the system, log back into the system, all of these very kind of boring basic functionality of the system tests, it does those. We also use it for some kind of more complicated tests of more advanced features. Uh, we have free IPA, which is, um, it's kind of like Active Directory, which is a feature that um, is a key feature of Fedora server. And that is, the thing with testing free IPA is you need a little farm of two or three machines. You need a server, you need a replica server, and you need a client. And we also test like a, the, its web interface so OpenQA turns out to be quite good at that because it's, it's capable of running like a little farm of VMs that all talk to each other that are all on the same network segment. And because it has the graphical testing capabilities, we can load up the web UI and make sure that works. So it's really good for that. And we also use it for testing, you know, does a database server work? Can you enroll against it? Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty comprehensive, the test that it covers. Um, so at some point, we, uh, initially we ran OpenQA exclusively for compose testing. So one of the big advances we made uh, several years ago at this point is at some point I realized, okay, we could take like a subset of these tests and we could run them on updates. So those are the little bundles of package builds that are expected to go stable. And I thought, you know, this would be kind of fun. This was almost like a little sideline at first. And that's become one of the most important things OpenQA does. We now run about a third of the total test suite on every critical path update for any branch of Fedora. So critical path is this concept of basically important packages. There's a, you know, there's a list of packages that are considered really important. And those and any dependencies of them are critical path. So any update to any of those packages gets you know, a subset of OpenQA tests run against it. Um, and if any of those tests fails, then the update cannot go stable. So this is one of the first points, really, where we had automated tests automatically preventing broken stuff getting into the distribution. Um, the, that testing also does a thing where it, it kind of builds a mini compose. Um, I taught OpenQA to replicate what the release engineering process does to build a live image and to build a network installer image, and these days to also to build a silver blue, which is our, um, our immutable distribution, to build a silver blue installer image. So it builds those, which makes sure that we haven't, the update doesn't break building those images, which is very important, and then it tests that they install and the basic functionality works on them. So in this way, we, rarely get major failures in the compose tests anymore. Before we started doing the update testing, we would often get a new compose and you know half the test would fail. And these days that very rarely happens because 
we caught the failure on the update before it got into the compose. It never got in, so the composers are usually, you might get, you know, 30 failures on something that isn't covered by the update tests, but we rarely get a completely broken compose anymore. Um, so the scale of our OpenQA deployment, we have two instances. We have a production and a staging deployment. Um, this is all run on hardware as well, is a fun thing about OpenQA. The server end of it is running on a VM, but all the actual tests are running on these hardware machines, which is fun to maintain. Uh, right now, we can run over 100 simultaneous tests in the system across three architectures, uh, x86-64, ARCH-64, and PowerPC-64 believe it or not. And so far, we've run over 3 million tests. So it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty good for you know, a tiny little distribution project. Um, I keep track of all the bugs that have been caught by OpenQA with a little whiteboard tag in the Fedora Bugzilla. And it's over hundreds at this point. It's, I think, four or 500. And they're always important bugs if they're coming from OpenQA. So it's, it's been pretty significant. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So uh, just a little bit about you know, how OpenQA really works within the distribution. Um, you'll, this part is kind of a contrast to the system we'll talk about next. OpenQA is like, it's not, a, this, again, this is a difference from how you'd use a CI system, um, maybe in an upstream software project, where the developer might need to sort of, you send your pull request, and if it fails, then you've got to figure out why your pull request failed the test and fixed it. In OpenQA, it's more like my life now, instead of waking up and running seven tests manually, is more like I wake up and I look at the OpenQA front page. And if there are any failures, I go and look at them. Uh, and I try and figure out why it's broken. And either I fix it myself or I submit a bug report to whoever broke it. So with OpenQA, it's, it's kind of, this is a service that the QA team provides to the people who are actually building the distribution. We test it, and if it's broken, we'll help you figure out why. Um, so these are some, con this is mainly for people who are actually, you know, Fedora people, but this is the way you can get in touch with us um, and the upstream development site for it. And if you're more interested in the specifics of how OpenQA works, there's a page at the bottom there. These slides are all available on the conference website if you want to check any of these resources later. So the other major system that we use to test Fedora is called Fedora CI. And hence we get to the original title of this talk, which involved CI. Uh, so a slight sort of digression on CI. Um, I, I, I have trouble with the term CI because a few years ago when it was, you know, the buzzy thing, there was a big fad at Red Hat for CI and people were constantly coming to us and saying, so how about CI for Fedora? And we're like, do, do you understand what that means? Like you think about a CI workflow on a simple software project where, yeah, you know, you send a pull request and some tests get run on it. and then you try and do that at the scale of the distribution where you have thousands of packages and you have all of this plumbing in the background, which anytime any of that changes, it can prevent the, the output working. And building a Fedora Compose, a full one, takes six hours. So we can't really do that every time anyone commits anything to a, to a package repository. So this is why the original title of my talk was that we're not really there yet, because doing CI, full on CI, for a Linux distribution is incredibly difficult, and I don't believe anyone is there yet. We do have this system called Fedora CI, which um, if we go back to the, the list of you know, levels where you can do testing, Fedora CI is much more focused on the package level of testing and the, um, even the repository level of testing, you know, the, the diskit repositories for the packages. And Fedora CI, is, is, it looks much more like the kind of CI system you may be familiar with. Um, it, in the background, it's running on Zool and a bunch of other stuff. But the way it's really expecting to run is, yeah, you make a change to a package, it will run tests on it, and it will communicate to you the results of that. Um, so it runs mainly tests that are defined in package repositories, uh, which is different from OpenQA, which has its own centralized set of predefined tests. So um, anyone who maintains a Fedora package can define some tests that should be run on it within the, the, package, the repository for that package. And they can say when those tests should be run, and they can also choose for their um, for updates to that package to be gated on those tests. So this is much more of a self-service kind of system. Um, yeah, it 
there's a whole test metadata format called TMT, which you know is very comprehensive and again different from OpenQA, which kind of does all of its own provisioning and setup and so on for running the tests. In TMT, you're in Fedora CI, your your test description sort of tells the system how to do all of this. It tells it you can tell it how many you know systems you want to provision. Well, like containers usually, you can tell it you know what version of whatever you want to be on there. What stuff needs to be pre-installed before your test runs and how your test is actually going to run how it's going to report but there are defaults for all of these things so you don't actually have to define everything from scratch um, testing farm is kind of a concept which is trying to unify a lot of the there's a lot of moving parts behind the implementation of fedora ci and we're trying to unify those across rel centos stream fedora um, and Packet, which is, Packet is a system for, if you maintain both the upstream application and the Fedora package for it, it tries to make your life easier by letting you keep the, the spec file, the recipe for the package in the upstream distribution. And you can integrate the whole process of building a package, testing it, landing it in the downstream distribution. You can have all of that integrated into your upstream development workflow, which is kind of a cool thing if, you, if you're in that position. And we're trying to kind of integrate all of these things because in you know in the background we kind of had a lot of different instances of Zool and other bits that make up a CI system which were essentially doing the same thing. And we're trying to kind of consolidate them all into one, which would also be nice because then you could use the same, you know, test definition across all of these branches of Red Hat related products. Um, Fedora CI also has this thing that it kind of inherited from AutoQA where it runs a small amount of generic tests on all package builds. So things like, tends to be like RPM sanity tests, like are the dependencies okay? Are there any obvious errors in the package? It runs those on all builds and files the reports for those. Um, and it does this for any pull request that anyone files to a Fedora package. So not all packages actually use the pull request workflow. Because a lot of packages are maintained by one person who doesn't really want to run through a forge for everything. But some packages are collaboratively maintained and they use pull requests a lot. So if you do that, then you get free testing with all of your pull requests. Uh, do, 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 do. <sighs> did I cover all this? I guess I did. So yeah, the, to kind of, the reason we have both Fedora CI and OpenQA is that they do really different things, basically. Um, Fedora CI is lower level, more developer aimed at kind of developers helping themselves with their own workflow. OpenQA is much more where we, the QA team, come in and say, is your stuff working? And if not, please fix it. <laughs> and you could make OpenQA do a lot of the stuff Fedora CI does, but it would be more, much less efficient, and there's really no reason to. And you could write your own, you know, look at the screen and type stuff engine for Fedora CI, but why would you do that when someone's already made OpenQA? So we've just kind of naturally evolved to this state where we have both things. There are, uh, I guess I'll cover this in a minute. Yeah, so I can cover that here. There are kind of integration points between the systems. Like when you're doing testing like this, it's great to test things, but it's useless to test things if you don't do anything with the results. This is something that I've learned. Like I've, I've encountered test systems where it, they run 2,000 tests a day and 500 of them fail and no one ever does anything about it. And what, what's the point of that? It's not getting you anywhere. So I'm very kind of keen on, I like test systems where everything passes and if there's a failure, somebody really cares and fixes it right away. Like I never like when I look at OpenQA and I see a single fail test, that, that doesn't make me happy. Um, so you need the results to be, they need to be very clear to the people who are able to take action on those results. Um, so as I mentioned, for me personally, I use the OpenQA web UI all the time. That's how I look at test results. But if you're a Fedora packager, it's not really useful to you. You don't know how to navigate it. That's not a natural entry point to you. So for that reason, we have whole systems to kind of deliver results to other places. Um, obviously, the best thing you can do with results, ideally, is not let things that fail through, which we call gating. Um, and this is definitely something we've innovated a lot on over the years. Um, when we first uh, built OpenQA and Fedora CI, everything was completely advisory. And in the early days, I kind of had this idea that we would gate the composes. So if the compose of Fedora failed a certain amount of tests or certain important tests, we wouldn't sync it out to mirrors. 
And an interesting thing that's happened over time is that we've kind of reached a point where we don't need to do that because instead we gated the updates. So the bad changes, as I mentioned, never make it to the composers, and the composers are never bad enough that we don't need to sync them out. So we kind of discovered over time that the update was the perfect, you know, gating point for keeping bad stuff out. Um, the contrast to gating is validation testing, which is where you kind of take a thing and you, you let it be built and then you manually test it and decide whether it's good enough to ship. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so the really great thing that we found with gating as we've gone increasingly into it is that you, if you don't do it, then something that's broken gets in and everything is broken after that. So if you let an update through which breaks a certain thing, then every time you test after that, that thing is gonna fail. It doesn't matter what you're testing. It doesn't matter if the thing you're testing broke that. And it wasn't the thing you're testing that broke that, but you're still gonna get a test failure. If you test early and you gate, then you catch those tests, you catch those failures right away, you keep them out and they don't pollute your other tests, your other results later. So that's something that we've been kind of focusing a lot on. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So the difficulties with gating, um, A capacity. I mentioned earlier we test critical path updates in OpenQA. Why don't we test all updates? Because we don't have the capacity for it. <laughs> Honestly, that is why. I'm, all of these tests are running on machines that have basically been handed down to me from the build system. <laughs> None of them are in warranty anymore. This is as much testing as we have the capacity to do. So that's obviously, you know, that's a limitation that we have to deal with. Reliability, you can't gate on a test that's not reliable. People hate it. If people are submitting updates and we're saying, no, you can't push your update out because this test failed, and people are like, well, there's nothing wrong. The test was just broken. You can't do that. You need your test to be extremely reliable if you want to gate on them. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, we have this problem where a lot of, there are a lot of inputs to producing a Fedora Compose. And sometimes the test will fail, not because of a problem in the thing that's being tested, but because someone made a bad change to something we don't test. So occasionally we have a situation where the test that builds a workstation image fails because somebody went and changed the recipe for building a workstation image, which right now we can't suck into the test system. So the first failure we see is just for whatever package happens to be built after that. And then we have to, I basically have to go back and say, okay, this doesn't look like this package introduced it, it must be this other change that introduced it. So that's something we're constantly having to deal with. Uh, yeah, so these are the ways that we communicate results. So this is the one that folks who work on upstream projects are most likely to be familiar with. Um, so this, get, this is the, you know, the Fedora source control for packages system. The screenshots maybe not the easiest to see here, but you can see this is like a pretty GitHub style thing. This is a pull request for a package and we actually have two systems feeding back into it here. Um, we got Fedora CI, which has said, okay, scratch build success, disk it test success, Zool success, and that just means all the tests that Fedora CI ran on this pull request passed. So this is you know, a very developer-focused workflow that is aimed at package maintainers who use the source control for their packages and are comfortable with getting their feedback in this, in this kind of way. Um, so yeah, it's very efficient. It's a familiar workflow for packages. Um, and it's, this is very early, which is the nice thing about it. Like if you catch a failure here, it never even reaches an update. It never gets anywhere close to the compose process. And we're running tests on pull requests, so the maintainer should know exactly what change broke things and can fix it right away. There's a major limitation with this. Um, so when you're making a distribution, sometimes, you know, two things need to be changed at once. Say you're bumping a library to a major new version. You know you need to rebuild a library and then rebuild six dependent packages against it. If you're just doing a pull request that's, say, to rebuild the dependent package or the pull request to change the library, ideally you would be able to kind of test all of those related changes together. Right now we don't have a way to do that in Fedora CI. On the back end, Zool is actually quite good at doing that, but we haven't hooked it up all the way through the system so that there's a way for packages to flag multiple changes to different packages as related to each other. Uh, so the next kind of integration point we have for results is Bodhi. This is the update system I mentioned earlier. So when you create an update in Fedora, which again is a little bundle of packages and an intent to put it in a certain Fedora branch, 
Um, it goes through this system called Bodhi. Bodhi has a web UI, and we have set things up so that on the page for your update, you can see all the automated tests results related to it. This sucks in results from both Fedora CI and OpenQA, and theoretically, any other test system. Right now, we don't really have any other systems reporting, but it's designed in such a way that any other automated test system could be stood up and report its results, and they would show up here. Um, obviously, one of the key things with Bodhi is that this is where we can test related changes together. So this is how you group related changes in Fedora. You create an update which has all of those related packages together. So when we test updates, we test all of the packages in the update together, and the, report, the result we report is related to the update as a whole. So that's one of the key reasons for testing at this level. Um, We've done quite a lot of work recently on improving the display of results here. This again is kind of Fedora specific, so mainly for Fedora folks in the audience, but if anyone has been familiar with this before, it, it had some glitches. It would duplicate results for a while. It would take a long time to actually list them all out. And within the last couple of months, we've actually set it up so that it tells you when tests are running, um, not just when you know a pass or a fail, but now you know that the tests are running. They haven't finished yet, which is kind of neat. Um, one thing that's kind of fun with Bodhi is that um, we, as I mentioned, we gate most we gate most updates on the test results. We do not gate results for Rawhide officially. Rawhide being the Fedora development version, um, for historical reasons and because I'm scared to turn it on, quite honestly. But in the last few weeks, we've started stealth gating Bodhi, which means if uh, stealth gating Rawhide. So if I see that a Rawhide update has failed tests and I can't immediately figure out why or fix it, then I go to the release engineering team and I say, can you untag that update, please? <laughs> so we're basically manually gating Rawhide. So we're sort of secretly taking out builds that fail the tests if we're confident that it's a real failure that's going to pollute down the chain. And that's actually been super useful in keeping Rawhide kind of sane lately um, and has really helped with quality more than I expected. So I really want to turn on the official gating soon. And yeah, the craziest result integration point, this is probably the funniest slide you're going to see. Uh, we use the Fedora Wiki to collect test results. Um, this is the actually the original zygote of Fedora testing. I didn't have time to include this slide, but if you go all the way back to Fedora 6, there is a very embryonic version of this wiki page, which is just a table with like 10 tests in it. And that's where Fedora QA started. And you know, 32 releases later, we still kind of have it. Uh, we still have wiki pages, which are tables full of tests with results in them. Uh, the reason this exists is because it's actually the best way we've figured out to combine manual and automated test results. Uh, so we have this crazy system where OpenQA tests to compose, all of its results actually get edited into these wiki tables. And then for the 25% of tests that aren't automated, that are manually tested, uh, people can just go and edit the wiki page and put their own results in manually. So if you, again, it's a little hard to see the slide from here. But um, as the caption says, this shows some results from OpenQA, some from a small system called RELVAL, and some from an unreliable biological organism. The ones which don't have a little robot logo next to them are from squishy humans who test things for us sometimes. <laughs> so that's where our compose level test results get collated. They get collated in the wiki. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go over this quickly because it's very detailed and we don't have that much time left. But there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes to make all this work. Uh, a key thing is Fedora messaging, which is an AMQP-based message bus. So often I say, oh, okay, like these results show up here. And then, you know, when an update is created, we test it. How does that work? That works through Fedora messaging. Uh, when an update is created, Bodhi sends out a message and OpenQA listens for that message and says, hey, I've got to test this update now. So that's a lot of the stuff that goes on here, even things like reporting to the wiki run through the messaging. Um, results DB is, it's, it's a vestige of auto QA, funnily enough. Um, it's a kind of, it's a system we use for results storage, which is literally just a key value result store with a web API around it. So you can send it a message saying, hey, I tested this thing and the result was blah, and it will store that, and then other things can query the results out of it. Both OpenQA and Fedora CI send results there. So that's how Bodhi can pull results from both systems. It just looks them up in ResultsDB. It doesn't care which system reported it. WaverDB is a similar system for storing waivers, which is 
Occasionally, we do still have test failures which are not real failures, and you really need to be able to say, no, this test failure is garbage. I need this update to go out. There's a button you can press which says wave failures, and that creates a waiver which goes in the WaverDB system. So that's how that works. And green wave is um, the system that provides the gating decisions, which basically Bodhi goes to GreenWave and says, hey, I want to know whether I should push this update stable. And GreenWave looks up all the results in ResultsDB. It looks up its policy, and it says yes or no. A lot of these things are hangovers from a microservices-based design we had several years ago, which never got completely built. But that's why we have weird little things like GreenWave, which some people wish would go away. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we're getting to about the right time for this. This is. The, the last time I did this talk, this was everyone's favorite slide. If you've been sitting there zoning out for 30 minutes or looking at cat pictures, but you still want to pretend you came to this talk, here is the whole talk in one slide. So take pictures now. Uh, that's what we do in Fedora. We test updates and composes in OpenQA. Uh, we test package builds in Fedora CI. We do not gate composes because we don't really need to. Um, we manually review the results, and when we're deciding whether to release the distribution, we kind of we have a formula for these are the tests that need to pass. Uh, Bodhi, which is the update system, is where we gate. Uh, we, we collect all the results from automated tests, and we decide whether the update goes stable or not. And we do um, pull request tests in Diskit. Uh, Kashi, I didn't mention. I should have taken that bullet point off. That's just another system we have. We have very small systems which do very, very small kind of things that I consider to be automated testing. And Kashi is one that checks whether a package builds from source or not. That's what FTBFS is. So the future, is it CI yet? As I mentioned, no, it is not CI yet. It's not going to be CI for a long time. If someone can figure out how to do a Fedora Compose in 10 minutes, please let me know, and then we can get somewhere with actually being CI. Until that happens, it's not going to be CI. But we're doing, you know, I feel like we've come a long way. Like from 2009, we had, you know, 40 manual test cases on the wiki, which we ran 15 times each per cycle. These days we have, you know, 100 and, over 150 automated tests, which we run every day on multiple branches. We have, you know, 50, 60 update tests, which we're running every 10 minutes. Um, we're gating failures. We've come a pretty long way. But things I want to do even further in the future, um, we're always building more tests for OpenQA. I mean, right now, um, my colleague who works on OpenQA with me is building more and more tests for different applications in GNOME. Right now, I'm reviewing tests for you know the disks application and stuff like this. We definitely want to officially gate Rawhide updates. There's, I always have one or two things I want to do before I hit that switch, which I think is mainly a mental thing in my head that doesn't want to do it, but <laughs> I do want to do that. As I said in the past, we really wanted to gate composes. I would almost cross that one off right now because we've decided it, it doesn't really seem to be necessary anymore. And more architecture coverage. Um, we do test on power, but I only have limited resources, so we don't run all the tests. We don't test on S390 because no one's willing to give me a mainframe for some reason. Um, <laughs> the ARH64 tests run on extremely old, broken boxes and fail a lot. I would like slightly less old, slightly less broken boxes. Which I literally, I got one yesterday, which I'm very excited about, but I need three more. And possibly move it to the cloud. Um, that would be the solution for the resource things, as long as someone's willing to pay the bill. But it's, it's quite a lot of work to, to actually run the tests in the cloud. So I've been looking at that for a long time. Um, and of course, the more you scale up, you, you don't just need resources to run more tests. You need to monitor all the results. If you add more testing, you still need to make sure someone is checking all the failures and doing something about them, right? So you always have to keep that in mind. Plans for the Fedora CI system. Um, there's a lot of, as I said, there's a lot of consolidation going on behind the scenes, um, which isn't super interesting outside of Red Hat, but is interesting to the maintainers. Um, there, they kind of have this thing, they're worried that people aren't taking as much advantage of Fedora CI as they could be doing. Um, the, the integration point for the tests being Diskit is really nice in theory, but this doesn't help the people who don't use it, who just maintain the tests with local Git pushes themselves and never make pull requests. So they're looking at ways they can, they can kind of improve on that. Um, and yeah, they, so that's kind of their, their focus right now. I should mention that I mainly work on OpenQA. Uh, Fedora CI is maintained by a different team. And Miro Hronkok, uh, sorry, Miroslav Vagkerti contributed most of the slides and information about Fedora CI to this talk, which I'm very grateful for. And other plans, yeah, so 
I mentioned this a couple of times, but these are these are the things that I talk about that are kind of inputs to how we build Fedora that we don't really test very well at the moment. So Kickstart, a Kickstart, you may be familiar with it as the way to automate a Fedora or RHEL installation. We actually use Kickstarts to build the live images. So there's a repository filled with you know Kickstarts that define and disk images, ARM disk images as well. And anytime someone changes one of those, ideally I would like to you know rebuild the image, make sure it builds, but we don't have that hooked up right now. I would like to do that. Comps, similarly, comps is where we define package groups. You know, these are the packages in the workstation package group. These are the packages in the server package group. Every t if someone changes one of those definitions, it can have you know interesting consequences. You take a package out that people expected to be there, and things start failing. We don't have we don't have things in place to test that stuff works when you change comps. I would like to have that. Pungy, Pungy is the, the tool that does builds composes. So if you change the definition of a compose, obviously that can break all kinds of things. Again, we would like to test that. Workstation OS tree config is slightly misnamed. That's where all the definitions of Silverblue, Cerisea, Kinoit, all the immutable versions of Fedora that have sprung up in the last few years live. Again, we don't test that changes to that don't break actually building the image. So this is something I want to focus on in the next year or two is onboarding testing for all of these things. Uh, yeah. And I think I'm about at my time. Is that right? Or do we have time for a Q&A? Maybe quick ones. Does anyone have questions? There is a mic here if you want to ask a question um, right next to the projector. You can grab, grab the mic, and I think you may have to turn it on. There's a switch on the bottom. Down here. Okay. Hello? Okay. Uh, so you talked about open QA testing yes. and how um, it would be good to be able to test GUI apps or like GNOME apps. Yes. So I was wondering. But how is that going to be done? Is it just going to be done over the frame buffer? Or is it going to be done over like a remote display or like a VNC or RDP? Yeah, uh, it, it does. Do, I should have explained this better. I, this is one of those things when you're giving talks, you realize what you should have done. But it does do that already. That is the strength of OpenQA. Um, as I, it runs a VM and it, it takes screenshots over VNC and it inputs mouse clicks over VNC and it inputs typing over VNC. So we actually, this is the key strength of OpenQA is graphical testing of, you know, arbitrary graphical stuff that appears on the screen. So all of the tests of the installer are using the Fedora graphical installer and the, the test system is literally clicking through it like a human would. Uh, so that's how that works. What I want to add on in future is just more tests. Like we're gradually trying to cover all of the core GNOME tests so that we know every you know core application works every day. But yeah, the, the, the technical capability is there already. That's what OpenQA is good at. Thank you. You're welcome. I would show a running OpenQA test, except I don't have network access for some reason, so I can't do that. But <laughs> do we have other questions? Okay, uh, so the, the kind of tests that OpenQA are doing are, are notoriously uh, sensitive to minor changes in UI and uh, yep. timing differences. How, how big a problem has that been? And are, how extensive is your testing with OpenQA? And, and has this problem really limited the, the scope of how much testing you're doing with it? That's a great question. Um, it's, it absolutely is a limitation and it's one of the more frustrating parts of working with it. So the way Open, OpenQA has various ways of coping with this. OpenQA doesn't match on the entire screen. Um, an OpenQA match is called a needle. And a needle basically defines like a small area. It's looking for like a very small, well, it can be as big as you like, but we normally make them small. Uh, so it only needs like, it, there can be multiple areas as well. So for a match, it can be like two areas of the screen. Um, and it only needs those specific areas to match. And it also has like a fuzz factor. It does some image processing. It kind of flattens the colors a little, which helps with very tiny changes. And you can set a threshold for the match. It's using like a, an, an image library. I can't remember which one with a matching algorithm and it gives you a score. So you can say, oh, as long as it matches to better than 92, I think the default is like 94. So you can set that floor to you know, 80 or 85 or 90 for each needle. And OpenQA also has a really good workflow for updating the needles. 
has this thing called developer mode. So if a test is failing, you can run it in a kind of interactive mode. Every time a match fails, it will pause and let you go into the needle editor, which is in the web UI. So you can basically just blow through, update all the needles, commit them back to the Git repo we keep the tests in, and it's fixed. But yeah, it is. It's, it's the biggest sort of manual maintenance task is just, you know, yeah, if GTK decides to change slightly how gray something is, I get to update 100 needles the next morning. So that is that is a fun part of it. But OpenQA handles it about as well as it could do, I would say. Hello. Um, something I'm very curious about is you mentioned 75% of the tests are automated. Yep. In your, I would say, the vision roadmap, yep. what technical limitation is limiting us to reach the last 25, apart from not having hardware? Uh, also a great question, yeah. Some of them are not, some of them are just kind of philosophical, like as the person who has to basically say, is Fedora good to go or not, there are some, I want a human to look at it. Like there are some tests which we just say, a human has to do this. So like making sure you can take an image, burn it on a USB stick, plug it into a computer, boot it up and install it. I want a human to do that every cycle. So some of them are just by policy, basically are off limits to automation. A lot of the rest are um, hardware tests. So the way you, OpenQA does technically have the capability to run on bare hardware systems. You can use, fan, there, it can use if you use like a, an enterprise class thing, which has like a management console, um, it can actually inject, you know, inputs and commands over the management console. So that's one way it can test bare hardware. There's also like a little Raspberry Pi based thing you can use. We've not hooked any of that up for our OpenQA instance yet. Suze is using that for theirs. So any tests where we're trying to make sure something works on bare metal, like a Fedora user installing on their laptop would use, those are not subject to automation right now. So thing, we have things like testing that a printer works. And we kind of, yeah, so that's the main constraint, is just things that are not possible to automate with the, the capabilities of the system where it is right now. I, I can totally understand. Um, this is something that we have done. We have uh, thrown ourselves against the wall <laughs> as well. Um, and there, there is a host involved where the host controls the DOT, yeah. and it does the testing. So um, yeah, happy, happy to talk more on how sure, Fedora yeah, can no, get that as well. We, we open sourced after. it recently. Awesome. All right, any more? Okay. Just real quick, do you guys do any performance testing? As Also a great question. Um, no, that is one of the things where resource constraints, it's like, that's one of the things. We also don't do any security testing on the QA team. There are teams within Red Hat who do security evaluations and they do test stuff on Fedora, but as the QA team, I basically cut it off and say, make sure the thing works. OpenQA in a sense implies performance testing because there are timeouts on everything. So if the performance is really terrible, the tests are gonna fail because the timeout will be hit. But we don't do anything like, is it 5% faster or 5% slower than yesterday? We just don't have the capability, don't have the capacity. If I had 10 more, 10 more people on my team, maybe I would do that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, can't fit it in. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot to everyone for coming out. Hope that was useful. <laughs>